Hey guys, welcome back to Spoodapods. Today's topic is what to feed your jumping spider. Now, as with previous video, I am talking about a regal or bold type. I'm using mine as an example. He's a Philippus regis. There's all sorts of different types, and we're talking about ones that are similar sizes to regal and bold types. So if you have anything that's significantly smaller or is a bit exotic, then maybe you need to do a bit of research, but this video will hopefully give most new owners a guideline on what you should feed them. So just to begin with, I'm going to quickly go through what you should feed your jumping spider at each stage of their life. After that, I'm going to talk a little bit about some safety aspects and just some things to look out for. I will do a separate video on maybe how to feed them because I think there's a little bit of nuances there that's important. But for this video, let's just focus on what you should be giving them. So if you're lucky enough to have a little spider link that you're bringing up all the way from the start, you really want to be giving them very small fruit flies only. That's just about the only thing they can handle. Some people say they can eat springtails, but it can be a bit difficult to feed them those. So the very small fruit flies are kind of the best choice. Once your spiderling is getting a bit older and they're more of a juvenile age, you can give them more fruit flies and maybe absolutely tiny pinhead crickets. They should be able to handle about both of these types of food. You don't really want to go any higher or larger than that because they may cause your little spider, juvenile spider, some harm. This is kind of the baseline you want to go at. Now your jumping spider is a sub-adult, so you can expand its diet a little bit. You can give them pinhead crickets, you can give them dubia roaches, you can give them small mealworms, and you can also give them the fruit flies as well, because a lot of people keep them in a diet for a bit of variety. Once your jumping spider reaches an adult age, you can expand their diet a little bit more. So you can give them pinhead and small crickets, you can give them green bottle flies, you can give them dubia roaches, you can give them small to medium mealworms, just make sure they're not too large. But at this point, you kind of want to be phasing out the fruit flies because they're going to be a bit too small for them and you want to give them a more substantial meal. Just as a few advisories, when you're feeding your jumping spider, make sure you give them a variety. You can't just give them the same food over and over again. For example, mealworms have a very high fat content. So if you're gonna continuously feed your spider mealworms, it's not gonna be very good for them and eventually it may cause them some harm. So variety is the spice of life. We say the same with our parrots. We feel it's the same for our spiders too. Make sure you're not feeding your jumping spider straight after they molt. You want to give them a bit of time after that because they're a bit more sensitive and a bit more fragile. Generally, people say a couple of days. That's the sort of guideline we've been um, consistently seeing, so that's the one we're going to go with. Make sure you remove any uneaten food as well. So if you've got a cricket in there for your jumping spider to hunt and it doesn't eat it, you want to remove that because it could pose a potential danger to them or it could just hide and you'll never find it again. It's even more important if you're providing mealworms or dubia roaches, it's probably better to actually tong feed them or crush their heads first or put them on a platform they can't escape from because the dubia will just burrow right to the bottom and you never find it again. Similar to the mealworm and then you'll find a beetle in there suddenly. So do be more careful with these feeding these guys and we often just tong feed our mealworms whereas we will let him hunt for his crickets and other prey. I will be doing a dedicated video on how to feed them, but just again, I think it's important to include in this one, make sure you don't overfeed your jumping spider. There's a lot of debate online, lots of forums, but to be honest, it's better safe than sorry. If they've got a massive abdomen, it means they're full, you don't wanna give them any more. Don't interrupt them when they're having their meals because no one likes to have their dinner interrupted. It's best just leave them to get on with it. It can take quite a while and make sure you do provide the appropriately sized foods that I've kind of listed in this video. The last thing I want to mention is if you are providing live food, which you have to, make sure that live food is having a high quality of life as well. You know, give them a little a decent enclosure, give them substrate to burrow in or um, existing. Give them food because that benefits your spider. And at least it means they're having their best life until they eventually get eaten by him too. So guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Hope again it was educational and useful, especially if you're a newer jumping spider owner. If you have any comments or questions, happy to hear from you. But in the meantime, from me and a still molting tank, see you later and take care.